Welcome back, everybody. Just a quick update on my uh, little portable grinder, wire wheel, sander, polisher workstation. Um, I got some machines mounted on here, and it's uh, turning out to be a very viable uh, little update for the shop. I did raise the legs a couple of inches to get this up to a better working height for me. It was just a little on the short side. So I've got my old Craftsman combination belt, disc sander. I moved my little steel grip, gymnasium grinder over here. It's got a wire wheel, wire wheel on one side, grinding stone on the other. And then my ancient, ancient homemade polisher. <clears throat> yeah. And there's actually enough room probably to put something small here. Um, some guys, if the tabletop's a little bigger, could even mount a bench top drill press here. Uh, but for me, I mean, I'm drill press rich. I don't need a bench top drill press. Um, and I got one out on the pump jack trailer anyway, plus a back blacksmith post drill around here somewhere and gobs a hand drill. So yeah, I don't need a bench top drill press, but be cool to have, but don't need one. So yeah, this is pretty cool. Let me uh, set this up in a tripod and turn some things on. It's always amazed me how quiet this little motor runs. God, that thing's got to be 70 or 80 years old. But uh, the bearings are tight in it. There's no slop in the shaft. It's quiet as a mouse. Um, another cool thing about that motor is uh, where you oil it. It's got these spring-loaded covers on both sides. There's medium in there you soak with oil. That's just really vintage cool. Yeah, this is going to work. going to work just fine and it's you know a walk around station so if you're working on something needs sanding wire wheeling polishing you know one-stop shopping and then when you're done with it you know it's got the casters on it you just wheel it off against the wall or in the corner out of the way um, one thing I do have to do um, yeah, like I, I, I drilled a hole here, ran all the cords in there. I got to rig up some kind of a, a plug-in on, mounted on the side of this thing, on the body of this thing, like a four quad, a quad outlet setup. And um, so I can plug it all in. And then I'll have to rig up a switch for the, for the buffer because it just, it's straight plug in and it comes on. But I mean, that's minor. That's just tinkering stuff and I think I've got the stuff around here to um, to do that with my little buffer is an Emerson uh, electric motor Emerson electric manufacturing company st. Louis Missouri it's 110 volts only two amps <laughs> what a cool thing man they don't make them like that anymore you bet so uh, what I'm probably gonna do I'll probably pull this grindstone off. I really don't need a, a grinder on here. Like I said, I'm grinder rich. Um, but I'll probably order some different types of wheels, a buffing, polishing type wheels from 3M and utilize this side of this grinder for that. Keep the wire wheel there and then keep the soft buffer here for the final shine. Yeah, I think that is probably the way I'm going to go with this. And if I want to, I've got a couple other electric motors. 
I could either mount here or one there. Same setup like this with the shaft sticking out to put different polishing wheels on there. So, yeah. I just realized when I showed these oilers, I wasn't quite in frame, but uh, this is a spring-loaded little cover. And it's dark in there. You can't see the, the fabric medium in there that's, you know, oil-soaked. And uh, one for the front bearing, one for the rear. I'll probably... Um, I need to redo this. This is kind of kind of shaky. I'll probably put a switch right here for this. And then um, I got to get one of those plastic deals, like an office desk, you know, you insert there and your cords run through it just to, to clean that up. And then, uh, like I said, mount an outlet probably here with a pigtail uh, cord on it, and then I can just run an extension cord to this. Um, off the overhead reel, or, you know, I got a million outlets in this shop. So, yeah. Another thing I did, this has got rubber feet on it. These two guys don't. So what I did was I used stall matting. A year or two ago, um, when I was mounting my air compressor in here, I went to Tractor Supply and bought a sheet of stall matting um, to put under the air compressor. Um, I didn't bolt that to the floor, and I didn't want to in case the final location wasn't going to be there. But, you know, every time you plug it in, it would walk on that concrete, you know. Well sitting on that stall matting, it doesn't walk at all. That's the same place it's been sitting now for two plus years. It hasn't moved at all. So uh, even without bolts holding it down, that stall matting really did the trick. So when I had some left over, so, you know, hey, find other uses, and I did. And um, there's no vibration at all with these things. Um, with this thing. I mean, it's smooth as glass. And even with this bargain, you know, grinder, that's not a high quality grinder, there's some vibration in there. I'm sure there's some run out in the shaft, but with that stall matting and it bolted down to that uh, pine wood top, it doesn't vibrate at all. So there you go. Um, a nice little update to the shop. Maybe this will give you guys some ideas also on uh, you can do something similar, especially if you're cramped for space. I'm getting there. This shop is filling up. and um, But it's nice to um, have a portable station you can wheel out of the way because I still haven't cleaned that welding table up yet. But the welding table is getting kind of cluttered with projects and junk and having a, a grinder permanently mounted to it took up more space and you know I didn't need a grinder mounted on there because I mean geez I'm grinder rich so um yeah that'll free up some space on the welding table slash fab table slash whatever table speaking of tables you know my 10 foot long workbench that actually is my primary workbench, but as you can see, it's covered with crap. I think I showed that a couple videos back that I needed to clean it, and I still haven't done it, so shame on me. The shop shouldn't be cluttered and looking this crappy, you know, but at the same time, it shouldn't be a surgery theater either. I mean, you've seen some of the YouTube channels where, gosh, you can eat off the floor in some of these shops, and guys are wearing lab coats, and... <laughs> Now, I can't roll like that. I'm a bit of a slob. I got to have some sloppiness, you know, so. All right. Well, I've rambled on long enough. There you go. Cool little shop idea. Uh, again, that wasn't my idea. Uh, my design, that came from that book I showed you by Alec Alexander G. Wares, uh, Making Shop Tools. Um, Google him. Uh, Alexander G. Wears, W-E-G-Y-E-R-S. Uh his writings are good, and all the illustrations in his books were done by him, 
hand-drawn, very excellent work, tedious work, but excellent. But I mean, he was a trained artist and craftsman. I mean, you, I think you would, uh, if you're a shop guy, metalworking guy, or an artist type, you would really enjoy reading his stuff. So there you go. Thanks for watching, everybody. Enjoy the rest of your day. I will see you soon. Bye now.